Everybody, I'd like to call this meeting of the Lakeville yeah. Planning Board to order. That's it is July 27th, Thursday, July 27th at 7 p.m. or just a few minutes after. We are meeting at the Lakeville Police Station meeting room. Uh, first item on our agenda tonight is 44 Clare Pond Road. This was previously a public hearing that we closed the public hearing at our last meeting. Um, and our discussion is to complete the draft of our final approval of the subdivision and a covenant. So I believe all planning board members got a copy of that uh, in their email. Uh, there was one change that we've made um, is that uh, the street lights is not a waiver. Um, you, uh, the street lights are shown in the revised drawings. So you had discussed that at your last meeting. So um, Kathy's going back to get the revised draft. We printed them out with them on her desk. So. Oh, this one? Yes. All right. Just in case there's any other. Uh, so anyway, at this time, I'd like to walk through what we have in front of us with the planning board. Uh, does anybody have comments on this document? Basically, we're looking at its uh, language to show that it meets the required zoning. Uh, it's going to be filed with the town clerk. Uh, the conditions of approval are, as of tonight, July 27th, uh, it was voted to approve the above reference definitive subdivision which is 44 Clear Pond Road uh, by Derek A. and Madeline J. Maxey of Webster Realty Trust. Uh, said definitive plan is the subject of the following conditions. Number one, prior to the board, board's endorsement of this approval on the definitive subdivision plan, the subdivider shall secure its completion by execution, executing a covenant with the board, lots one, two, and three shall be subject to the covenant. No lot may be sold until A, the street work and associated improvements detailed on the approved definitive plan have been completed and inspected in accordance with the subdivision regulations, or B, the board is in receipt of an irrevocable letter of credit, cash, or a tripartite agreement in an amount agreed to by the board as necessary to secure the completion of the work and associated improvements for the lots where construction is proposed. And a lot release form K will be endorsed by a majority of the board indicating the drainage system is complete and the roadway construction with its base course of asphalt, the form K must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds Land Court. Item two, all work covered under the performance guarantee shall be completed to the satisfaction of the planning board prior to the release of such guarantee. Final release of performance guarantee shall occur after street acceptance. The applicant shall pay for the cost of the inspection of the road, drainage, and utility construction. The cost of final inspection shall also be paid for by the applicant. Item four, the applicant must obtain all applicable approvals and permits for the stormwater drainage prior to the commencement of any construction. Five, the applicant or successors are required to maintain the drainage system until the street is accepted by the town. Swales and basins shall be cleaned yearly or more often if required by the operations and maintenance plan and prior to acceptance. In the event of a maintenance failure, the applicant shall be provided notice and the reasonable opportunity to cure such deficiency. The applicant's failure to cure such deficiency in maintaining the drainage system will be considered a violation of this approval. Six, construction of the proposed ways and services shall be limited to 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, on Saturdays, and no work shall be on Sundays or federal and state holidays. During construction, all local and state and federal laws 
shall be followed regarding noise, vibration, dust, blocking of town roads. The applicant shall at all times use reasonable means to minimize inconvenience to residents in the general area. Seven, during construction, the applicant shall keep clear pond road clean and free of dirt and mud. Eight, the approval by the planning board of this plan shall not be treated as nor deemed to be approval of the Board of Health for a permit for the construction of any use of it on any lot of any individual sewage system. No building or structure shall be placed on any lot without all applicable approvals and permits from the Board of Health. Nine, there shall be no construction other than the shown on the approved plans unless planning board or its representatives shall have reviewed and approved such change. 10 approval of the conservation commission is required. 11 the streets shall be uh, this street shall be a public roadway. 12 the final inspection and a stamp as built will be provided by a licensed civil engineer as well as all conditions written on the plan. 13 the definitive plan covenant and its approval letter shall be recorded either at the registry of deeds or the land court. Three copies of this endorsement, definitive plan, and all recording information shall be provided to the planning office. 14. Any proposed changes by the applicant, his successors, or assigns from the approved plans deemed substantive by the town officials shall be submitted for review to the planning board. The board shall determine if there is a need for any public hearing and that shall then act accordingly on the changes. All approved revisions shall be illustrated on the applicable sheets within the plan submitted to the planning department. Uh, and it goes on to have a signature block for the uh, planning board uh, after we vote on this document. Uh, something that me and Mark talked about earlier today was uh, not for the definitive plan, but for just this document, if the planning board would consider making the chairman be the only one required to sign it rather than all five members, but the definitive plan would still be required to be signed by all five members. Once This is just for approval to go to the town clerks for the 21-day appeal period, and after that, if there's no appeal, then we would then sign the Mylar plan, all five. Yeah, the reason, the reason for that is sometimes during the discussion we add a condition, we modify something, um, so that way I can make the changes on the computer. I can include the actual vote into the text, and then um, and there are some things on this that still need to be filled in, which we're not at a computer and a printer now. Exactly. So if we vote on this, then uh, the, the actual vote would be recorded. Of in favor or opposed, and then any other blanks that need to be filled in or anybody chooses for an amendment now, that would be done at the office, and then the vote be carried out. Well, the vote be carried out here, but then I would execute the signing only. But you would execute the signing after any changes are approved by the board? That's correct. Well, we would make the changes now. No, because I heard you guys say in discussion, there no. could be some changes. Well, there could be changes like tonight to one of those conditions. I would then go to the office tomorrow, Monday, make no, a change. No, I understand change. that, but after, between then no. and the document, no, no, there no, are no, any no. other changes. No, no. It would be whatever changes the board decides prior to the vote. So Yeah, that would be tonight. After, after you vote, there's no changes. Okay. If I may, Mr. Chair, um, you know, aside from the document, um, because the last meeting wasn't recorded by Lake Cam and I wasn't here, just as a, like a little recap. So they went from a two lot subdivision to a four lot, and now it's down to three. And, and just to be clear, that didn't all happen at the last meeting. Right, right. That's collectively over the last six but months. But the last meeting, it went from four down to three. Correct. And this is the first we're seeing of the three lot plans. So the, the golf course remains on Lot two, lot three is a proposed um, house lot, and lot one is just to remain 
as a solar field. Correct. No. Yeah, if there's a, a little further discussion in this revised draft, um, I add a paragraph about the, uh, which was not in the email version. Okay. And then um, my question on number 11, um, that it's going to be a public roadway, was that always the intention? I don't recall that. I know we had talked of, of this being a large business zone property. Um, and we wanted the road to meet those standards, but I don't recall it being proposed as a public roadway. Um, I don't specifically recall if it was, if that specific question was asked by any planning board members, but I know we didn't discuss uh, a homeowners association type of thing as if it was always intended to be a private way either. Uh, mm. So this my would still have to go to town meeting for approval if it were. Yeah, my understanding is that it, the intent was always to have it accepted as a public way, even though that portion didn't come under great discussion. We did discuss more of the structure of the road or the issues with some of the lot lines and setback things because of the solar panels, and that's why some of those boundaries changed. Anything, Jack? No, I'm fine. John? I'm good. Nora? I'm okay. Did you want to amend anything within the conditions, Michelle? I'm just looking through uh, this revised version uh, right now, real quick. What paragraph did you add, Mark? Um, the bottom of the first page where it starts, the site is located at 44 Clear Pond Road. And from there, right up to the section of waivers. Those two short paragraphs. And then at the bottom of waivers, I added the, um, removed the street light from the waiver requirements. So as you see in the last paragraph, planning board hereby certifies that the above subdivision entitled Golfers Way has been voted definitive subdivision approval. And then that blank space is where our vote would be recorded, whether it's four to one or five to zero or whatever. Uh, and then, so uh, I guess I'll make a motion to Amend the signature blocks of the document so that only the chairman needs to sign this document for approval to the town clerk's office. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So that will be the only amendment that we make to this document. Um, and so I now make a motion for the planning board to approve the certificate of approval of the, sub the subdivision plan. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. So the golf course from Block 2, I heard Michelle say, is there anything in this discussion for your vote that deals with golf course being sold to another party for use of a warehouse? There's nothing in here that, that that's nothing to do with the Subdivision Control Act. Look, you still have 
not through what we, not through this action that we took tonight. But technically, that could still happen. That could have still happened if we didn't do this. But I uh, just want to be cautious to be clear. We did close the public comment portion of this hearing, and I, I'm happy to answer your question. But I just don't want it to devolve into we can't rehash out the plan. It's in a good state right now. But uh, like I said, we, we did close the public hearing portion of that. So, that said, uh, <coughs> board has approved that. Um, so that concludes everything regarding 44 Clear Pond Road at this point, right? Thank you. After email. Uh, so the next item on the agenda is a similar document for Stowe Estates, 35 Myrick Street. Uh, we have another certificate of approval of a definitive subdivision plan. This document is in the same form as the last one we had. Uh, different conditions, different waivers. Uh, did everybody get a chance to look through this? And Mark, was there any specific edits from the email copy that we had earlier? I don't believe I made any edits to what I emailed out to the board. Do you have any comments on this one? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do. Um, we So under waivers, they're still looking for 14 waivers. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see that um, they are doing the underground utilities. But yeah, you, you had been pretty vocal about that. And I, yeah. when I had done the research to find out that only one subdivision in the past 10 years had above Mm -hmm. ground wiring and it was because it was pre-existing so I felt like that was spot on to do that okay but so my my concern is still um, no sidewalks uh, knowing there's going to be uh, sidewalks up and down majority of 39 after the expansion project um, I think the traffic's going to fly down there faster we know there's an industrial zoned uh, section that uh, and also a highway access I, I just you know, planning board must be concerned with pedestrian safety. And for me, having uh, children in these houses walk, you know, up 750 feet, plus that if you're at the end, you're at 1,100 feet, walking up, especially in the dark um, when it's winter time, icy, uh, narrow road. Um, <coughs> I, j I just, I, I feel like we're just not doing a service to the uh, future residents of those homes by not including sidewalks and and I just think 14 waivers is quite a bit still so that's that's the one I'm just I'm not, I'm not can, on board can with. we even go back into those when we close the hearing we're allowed to know. discuss I mean, it's, it's well, I know we can discuss it, but I don't think we can make a change on it at this point. Well, it's no, no longer a public hearing, so I can't really take a solicit any public comments. Um, you know, if you have a specific question of the engineer or the applicant, you can ask that, but pretty much you have to limit your discussion to this document. Okay. So, so, yes, right, I, I guess you so can the, discuss The legal the question is, can we change a waiver no. yeah. or remove a waiver from this now? Because you haven't voted. Yes, you can. Okay. That's right. Just like you can add a condition or modify a condition. Yes. So, I'm indifferent to that. I think Michelle makes a fair argument, and I would say if the board, as a majority, thinks that it should have sidewalks, then so be. Jack, do you have a comment? I think in the last meeting, we talked about 
There is no elevators. No, no, no this no, is a different this project. Is no, no estates. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. This is the, um... Yeah, subdivision over 79. Two. Oh, that's right, that's right. Do you have a... I'm, I'm kind of like you. I'm a little bit indifferent to it, however. Um, understanding what we're looking at in the town, I, I would be more inclined to require sidewalks. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the sidewalks be nice. I don't know if it's imperative that the three, three houses get the side of the street. Do you have any input on this? No. Do you have a recommendation, Mark? Well, it is just a three-lot subdivision, and I know uh, side blocks will be on 79. Um, is that That's not even going to go that far, though. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I'm not sure, just to, um, whether it's... Uh, how I, far I don't down, think that that the Route 79 down. project goes... No, it's not. Past, uh, but that doesn't mean it can't be eventually. Mm -hmm. Street. Yeah. I, I don't Seven think eight. it ma matters whether it's three homes or 16 homes. It's a matter of really safety for the residents in, in that, those homes. Exactly. As they move about. Generally, I agree on larger projects. I mean, I really do think that they should, especially if they connect to something. But for a three-lot subdivision, we have lots of small private roads in this community without sidewalks. And so um, a lot of the common I've heard in the past is, aside from some major roads, that a lot of people uh, don't really want sidewalks. Unless they I connect heard places. That. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Some towns do require every subdivision, regardless of size, to have sidewalks. So, um, I'm usually a, quite a proponent of sidewalks, but for three house lots. So. I guess I look at it as it, 14 waivers is very lenient. Um, and you could go either not grant the sidewalk waiver or not grant the streetlight waiver as a one or the other just to either illuminate the roadway because it will only be three families using it but at least any pedestrian would be able to see with street lights i think we eliminated the we we said yes to the street light waiver in lieu of they agreed to put the light put lights on at the houses something at the end of the the driveways to the homes yeah, but is there a condition for that? Yes. So there's a condition number uh, number eight. It says each owner shall maintain on its lot a single post mounted lantern type exterior light fixture. The fixture shall be a dark sky compliant LED fixture. Said lights shall be placed to illuminate the entrance of the driveway servicing the lot. So there will be some illumination. I think that if that's the case and that's the concession for sidewalks, that there should be a, a, a distance that that might not go any further than from the roadway. We should probably call that out in that condition to ensure that there's no uh, misinterpretation that they are lighting their driveway, that the intent is to light the end of the driveway and the roadway. Mm -hmm. So that street, uh, that pole light be within the cottage 10 feet of the property line? At LeBaron, they, this is the same issue we had at LeBaron. And the, and the pole light in, on the lawn is only 15 feet from the from the uh, street, and it's well illuminated. Ten feet from the. 
From the, the lot line, the property line, not not obviously edge of road because then they'd be putting it on the common, or I guess that's a parcel rather than their own property. Or, so they'd be required to maintain it if it was part of their own lot, but within 10 feet of the lot line. Why did that? Uh, is it through that recommendation that we move uh, waiver number eight and the requirements of sidewalks? Is that what we're saying? Because we removed the waiver for street lights. We allowed the waiver. For right. And in lieu of that, yeah. we don't want to grant the waiver for the, the uh, not having to be required to have sidewalks. We want them to be required to have sidewalks. No, I thought the whole thing about putting the lights at the end of the driveway was now to illuminate the road enough so that you didn't need sidewalks. She said. No, I just, I looked at it as an illumination of the area, not in replace of sidewalks. And it doesn't do anything for a child sit standing at the corner of this cul-de-sac and Route 79 in the darkness at 6 a.m. while people are barreling down there, a brand new road widened on their way to work. Okay. Sidewalks. Everybody okay with sidewalks? Mm-hmm. We're not granting the waiver for sidewalks. Okay. I'll move that down as not being granted. Keeping in any kind of an amendment to number eight with the street lights close to the road. Well, I think you should, if you're not going to have street lighting, you should still require okay. the So the only lighting. change is really just we're not granting the waiver for sidewalks, is the only change then. Yeah. And then, or you're keeping the 10 feet. Yeah, and then I'd say keep the 10 feet if right. you're going to. It, okay. It's clearer to specify just so someone doesn't stick it halfway up the driveway and claim that that's their entrance and you get an argument. Okay, so we have two changes to the document. Does anybody else have anything? Um, give me one minute to... Have a, someone have a copy of the drawing for... Um, this property. I think I have one in my car. Do you need one? Yeah, I just want to check the location, the drainage, and how the sidewalk would work. Just from see if you should. I have it here, I believe. Okay. install a sidewalk on the uh, what would be the kind of the north side of the where the homes are because it looks like uh, the drainage swale is on the uh, on the side. side. Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. Just want to make sure it doesn't uh, majorly affect the drainage design. That would be like a little like one of the two foot gravel. What? Two foot, so it'll be in lieu of one of the two foot gravel, right? So they have, aren't they doing 
two feet well, of gravel still, inside. I still have. They'll still have oh. the gravel, two foot gravel shoulder, but they'll have to install a asphalt berm and then a raised sidewalk of five feet wide um, along that side up to the. Uh, they have plenty of distance within the right of way. Right. Yeah. And the swale is on the uh, the other side of the street. It looks like they've kind of super elevated the roadway, so. Are we gonna require that change to the plans before we sign it, or are we gonna Yes, they'll, they'll have to make, so we'll put it on in the approval. I'll write it into the uh, condition, into the approval, but they will have to make a change to the drawings. To get signed. Okay. So, does anybody else have any comments or changes for this? I'm just double checking here because I know there was concerns from residents about the water. Um, I just want to make sure that this is strong enough that if there is an issue with water down the road, that it'll be properly addressed. And uh, is there anything other than number 16? really deals with that. Uh, actually, it was addressed within Conservation Commission's oh, yeah. uh, notice of intent. So was there a condition added to that? The condition for the oper operations and maintenance and no snow plowing into the ret retention pond. Uh, there were a few things that they added to it. Okay. So that carries in perpetuity with that approval. Okay. I'm on board with those changes. Okay. So that said, uh, I make a motion for the planning board to approve the certificate of approval of the subdivision plan for Stowe Estates, 35 Myrick Street, with the changes of no waivers for sidewalks and the clarification of the, the pole lights to be within 10 feet of the property line on item number eight, and that with approval that the chairman be the only one that needs to sign the approval uh, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Next item on our agenda is a continued public hearing for 13 Main Street. section um, he, on this side of this building where we had a small section of grass area that flowed onto the abutting property um, so they asked us to look into that um, and then in their final comment they suggested that we take this area and grade it so it all ends up in in the infiltration basin now, just to explain why we didn't do that, there's a lot, this is a very large area in existing conditions of bare ground that now sheds onto this property. 
So there's this, there was a significant reduction in rate that was going on to the, this property. But since we got three of the same comment in the letter, we figured it made sense to let's do a little bit of regrading and we'll take all of this flow all the way from the property line and bring it down into our infiltration basin. Um, what it did is that the, what the change that it made to the infiltration basin is in the 100 year storm event, it went up, um, I believe, one one hundredth of an inch or one tenth of an inch. Uh, it's a very small amount. We submitted those calculations back uh, in the letter response and uh, it literally didn't change. We still had a foot of freeboard in the, in the infiltration basin. Regardless, we had a little bit more than a foot before. Um, so that's three of the comments they had. Uh, they asked us to provide uh, calculations showing that the infiltration basin and the subsurface infiltration chambers drain within 72 hours. We gave them the hydrographs for the 100-year storm, and it shows that they drain in less than 36 hours. I think in the worst-case scenario, we had one that was 33 hours, so well under the 72 hours required. Um, they asked us to confirm groundwater with a new test pit. We had a test pit close to this infiltration, um, proposed infiltration chamber structure. Um, up here, but they wanted one right in it. So we went out there uh, end of last week or beginning of this week, excavated that test pit, yeah, show where it is on this plan, included the test pit log in the, in the plans and the detail sheet of the plans, and they dug down 13 feet and did not see any. Uh, this is just about the highest spot on the site. They no dug down 13 feet, no indication of groundwater, so groundwater is well below. Uh, uh, system that we proposed there. Um, they had two comments on stabilization. We have a couple, there's indicated these lines are contour lines and uh, when you see a lot of them together that means there's a slope. So they asked us to, um, they asked us about the stabilization and I'm, I'm not sure if they didn't see but we had stabilization measures included on the erosion and sedimentation control plan. Um, I pointed them to those, but they also had a um, comment that um, it didn't say anywhere that they were to be permanent. So I included a, um, of course they're intended to be permanent. We've, at, we've called out for where we have a few spots where we have one-to-one -one slope and call out for riprap and that certainly is permanent. But to, to um, satisfy their comment, I added notes to the erosion control plan that all uh, all stabilization me measures are to be, be remain as permanent fixtures. Um, they, so that's another one, second one. Uh, we had two incorrect um, great elevations, rim elevations on these two drainage manholes. So we thank them for pointing that out and we revised those and fixed that. Um, they asked for in these subsurface structures that we put an inspection port, which is just a little handhold that you can actually see down and make sure it's, it's infiltrating. So we've added that to the detail sheet. We've added, added those uh, inspection ports that they, that they asked for. Um, they asked about the water. The water comes from an adjacent property uh, and is stubbed, currently stubbed at the property line. And they just asked about that. Number one, um, what what had been put in place for that? And there's a permanent easement on this property for uh, for the purposes of this property uh, and the water department to be able to maintain that um, eight inch water main. And they asked about whether or not the Taunton Water Department was aware of that. And yes, they are. They're fully aware of that. And that's okay. and, and just for clarification on that, that was done in uh, coordination with the Taunton Water Department. So in the future, no one would have to break into Route 105 to tap into the water line. Um, and then the last comment um, they had was that the, at the front of the property, essentially at the property line, we have a trench grate. And that's because our property is higher in elevation than uh, Route 105 and Main Street. So you can't discharge that water. Okay. Exactly. So they they didn't don't like trench grates, but um, 
unfortunately, essentially they're required by D, uh, Mass DOT. When we're draining water towards a, ma a state highway, we have to collect that water, all of it, and bring it back into the property and do something with that. Um, so um, there, you, we could slope the road to one side uh, and put catch basins in, but then you would end up with a large portion You'd have a large triangular section like this that would be draining into the road and wouldn't allow it. So, yeah, we understand that comment. We've had um, dozens uh, I think one of the, the, the issues the road. that they had with it, though, was the maintenance and the clogging, right? Um, that's when I read my, my, my comment is we just haven't seen, we haven't had any problems with that. They're properly maintained. There should be no problem with that. Um, yeah. Is, is so that we, called out in the operations maintenance of the drainage? Yeah, one of the ways we get around that, as you see here, see we have a trench grate and drain, and it drains directly into a, a drain manhole here. So the, the drain manhole is where all, any sediment that runs out of this is going to be collected here. So yes, the, the operation maintenance plan addresses uh, getting the sedimentation out of the trench grate and the instructions to examine it every two years uh, by a professional engineer to make sure it's structurally okay and then removing the sedimentation from that so on on the property right, right next, next door, door the state required it we have exactly the same out. thing on that right next door and it was required there by the DOT so um, we agree with every comment they had and we've already taken care of ev everything that they've asked for except for that one just because we know DOT is going to require it if we try to get rid of it and do something different. Yep. Uh, I did talk to the building commissioner about, mm -hmm. um, he thinks possibly because of the three stories and you have common hallways you may end up that might trigger architectural access boards needs for elevators yeah like, like i said at the last meeting i'm going to fully comply with all building code regulations yeah and, uh, i think that's beyond building code once you have like i said it's three stories in common space or two stories and you have to at least have ramps to the second floor if you have common space okay. that said i understand that it's we, we're not discussing building code here or a, 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 B, but if, I guess if we made an approval, I would want a condition of the approval that if you were required to put elevators in, that we are shown that handicapped parking is reasonably close to where the elevator needed to go. Just, you know, from a, a use standpoint, it seems that that would make sense. Uh, I think the fire chief would also want the same thing so that if he had an ambulance spot that he needed to get to and they needed to bring somebody down an elevator, that those two things weren't opposite ends of the building, so to speak. Okay. You know, and it's just, it's really, it's just, I'm looking at the handicapped parking and someplace for an emergency vehicle to pull in that should be somewhat close to the elevators if you do have to have them. I'm 100% fine if the architectural control board or the building commissioner make the determination that that's required that we come back to the board for maybe a minor alteration of recycling yeah. handicap slots yeah i'm not looking to redo uh, yeah. site plan review as much as if that happens talk to mark amend a plan and just have us just so we have the right plan on record and you have the best possible flow for the, the site yep, that makes sense mr chair if i may i'm, I'm glad you brought that out because i was um going to talk about that because when we're talking about common areas it is privy of the planning board to be involved in that and I even want one step further in, in looking at you talk about the arch architectural access, uh, access board and it's actually under 521 CMR 28.1 uh, states that all multi-story buildings and facilities shall be served by a passenger elevator and that starts at third, three floors and above so we would want, to Mark's point, be able to see where the handicap parking is located, the access areas for our first responders uh, before we did any final sign-offs. 
of this. Could I just mention that uh, handicap spaces are shown and they have to be closest to the entrances of the, uh, and that's where they are. So, right, so I, think the, yes, I think my point is make sure you don't tuck the elevator in the back. Right, the elevator, the handicap, the, for site plan review purposes, as, as spaces are as close to the, to the entrance as we can get them. Um, for what you're talking about, that's a building code issue. And if the, and Bo is aware that um, your concern is that the elevators be close to the entrance as well. So for site plan review, we, we, I don't know what, for showing elevators wouldn't impact where we show handicap parking spaces. They're at the, they're cl as close to the entrance as possible. Where they put the elevator is going to be, yep. you know, that's like you say, that's, relative. I understand that that's a bit out of our realm, but I just want to make sure that it's a consideration. Understood. If that does Understood. happen, like it, it does seem like there is some literature out there that may require it, so. Okay. Um, Michelle, did you have anything? Um, so, I thought we were going to get a peer review on the traffic study submitted because well, we there was. We did talk about that. There was a traffic study submitted, and it's it's using the senior housing component um, for their generation. Um, I'd like a peer review done on that. Um, we know that there was a fatality about 500 feet from this at Bridge Street, and I think that you know we shouldn't just take that lightly. Okay. Does the board agree that we should have a a peer review done on the traffic study? Kind of different. I think Jack and John, you kind of are. Yeah. Yes. Even if we both vote no, there's a majority. So. Uh, there's no. Do we need an official so. vote on that, Mark, to do that, or no. is that just good? No, necessarily. Need that. I, I think the but if the, the, the clarity of me. All right. So, uh, make a motion to have the traffic study that we have in hand. Uh, reviewed by environmental partners for whatever needs that that needs to be looked at for vehicular and pedestrian flow. Second. I have a motion and a second for peer review on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. So get that done as soon as possible. Um, is there anything else that we have? Uh, <clears throat> seems like from a south side of those two points. They're pretty well cleaned up. Go there ahead. could be one, one other issue related to the age restriction. Um, so age restrictions allowed by regulation by DHCD, um, which is down called something else. Um, so I'm checking with council to see whether it needs to be permanent. Um, and uh, because you indicated that you did not want to place a deed restriction on the... Yep, so I, I just want to make a clarification that we're not going through DHCD or... For I, forget, I, I forget their new name now. Yes. But we're DOH. not going through their age restriction approval process. We're simply following the Town of Lakeville bylaws, which is separate. And DHCD has something completely different. We're not going through DHCD. I think we do need to have Town Council's opinion on this. Right. So um, I've emailed her, so at least we'll have it in writing whether... She still feels it's applicable for some reason. I know you're not going for that through them for financing, but or, um, or for any conditional right. approvals. So, um, so I will still get a clarification because so, I know that's a yeah. And, and the number okay. one clarification right. is age qualified and age restricted. Mm -hmm. Very different things. Right. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So. I think based on that, we'll just need to continue until we get the results from the peer review on the traffic study. Uh, I'm sure we'll hear from council way before that. Yes. But you'll get that mm -hmm. to environmental par environmental partners. Yep. We'll get an estimate and we'll send the, the thing over and we'll give them the go ahead to review it. So uh, we're going to continue you to our very next meeting. And if those results aren't back yet, we'll take that as it comes. Okay, so that wasn't in their original proposal because we provided that traffic study with our original submittal. Did that go to environmental partners? 
I don't recall. I mean, it's been a while. So, when the traffic study was submitted with the plans, it should have gone. So, I I don't know. We'd have to check. So, I remember your original submittal was for 19 buildings, about 80 units. So, the non traffic between your original. John, John, could I get you to come up to one of the microphones? If you want to address us, I want you to come up and state your name. Just either one. Take your pick. John Gregory, just commenting. Gentlemen, saying original submittal included a traffic study, correct? This submittal included a traffic study. How's it what he's doing? Next to CPS. So I'm not talking about the 19 buildings. So my apologies. This is CPS. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Barbara Mankowski, 17 Johnson Drive. Um, you know, having served in the town both on Master Plan um, and here on Planning Board, um, it's my opinion that we should be supporting ownership, not rentals. It concerns me deeply that we would have a three unit building for age restricted homes that does not have um, an elevator. I'm getting up in age and I'm in my mid 50s, and I can tell you that three flights of stairs is a long way to go um, after you've done uh, the living that I've done. So I am concerned about that. Um, and I think it's, you know, we're, snit we're gonna sandwich this place in between, I think it's going between a storage unit and a funeral home. I mean, CBS. Yeah, CBS. okay, in between the funeral home and the CVS, storage and CVS. Storage. Yeah, so I just hope that it has appropriate buffers so that the people that live there don't, you know, feel so sandwiched in between what is otherwise appearing to be a business district. So that's my two cents. And deed restriction, I think, would be nice if we're going to have it age restricted. So I guess it would be good if we found out that that traffic study already went to Scott Turner, but I mm -hmm. yeah, it well, off. Yeah. I apologize if it didn't go. It wasn't on the proposal. Huh? It didn't go. It was not on the proposal. Okay. All right. We'll get it up. Very good. Uh, so that said, Susan Spear of Town Valley Road. So I just wanted a point about the elevators. To me, if you don't put elevators in, you're discriminating against seniors that want to live in that building. They might not, you know, be able to live in the, the first floor because it's 88 compliant apartments, but they may have bad knees, bad hearts, bad whatever. And for them to have to go up three flights of stairs with groceries, you're looking at some major problems. Plus our firefighters, EMS have to go up three flights of stairs to take someone down. It's just, it's insane not to put an elevator in for supposed 55 and over but in the bylaw it says that it only has to have one person that's 55 which is yeah. kind of crazy too that needs to be changed well i don't know that there'll be well change you know you're closing the barn doors after the horses are out right. that was something that was done probably 20 years ago right which probably should be looked into for future and then my second point is um, what's being done to control the dust on that property now today the dust was flying across 105 it was like a dust storm it almost looked like there was a fire are you currently doing work there not that I'm aware of the only thing that was done was the test hold that EP wanted yeah that was I think it's just all the bare land that's there right now. Yeah. You know, with the winds we had today, it did look like there was a fire back there. Yeah. So I would suggest we get a project in there as we construct it as quickly as well, possible. I uh, figured that out. <laughs> yeah. Said the engineer. Okay, that's, that's my two cents. Thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Uh, August 10th. Yeah. 
All right, so I make a motion to continue the 13 Main Street uh, site plan review hearing until August 10th at 7 p.m. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. All right, motion carries. See you then. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, next item on our agenda is an A and R plan for 154 Rhode Island Road, uh, represented by Riverhawk Engineering. survey prepared the uh, form a plan for 154 Rhode Island Road and I did not bring a copy of that I apologize but I don't know if there's any questions or issues for the plan it's just uh, form a we're not creating any frontage just creating a, a new lot which will be sold to the uh, Seventy-five feet of frontage, and it certainly meets the 160-foot front yard circle. Mm -hmm. I just have the site plan. I, I think probably have that one electronically. Do we have that? Yeah, it's just like that Single page. you're joining the two properties that, that, the, the ultimate goal will be we'll take the, the land that's um, cut off of 154 uh, 154 Rhode Island Road and it'll be joined with the, with uh, 156 Rhode Island Road. And the, the I wish the notes was just a little clearer it says intended to be conveyed to the embodied property it should be conveyed and combined with the embodied property and should reference the lots but So you're carving a parcel off. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, carving a parcel, not a, not a visible lot or anything, but it's a, a lot to be joined with a barn. Yeah. Right, but the lot you're carving it off of still remains a the buildable lot. lot. You haven't made that a non-conformity. That's correct. The lot, the lot it's, um, 154 will remain a, con a conforming uh, lot. So I think to Mark's point, and we had sort of talked about this, that we definitely want to see this now. If you're going to come back with another A and R, or how are you going to show us that this becomes part of 156? Um, the intent would be it'd be added by D, but um, do you, do you well, I think that was just one of our requirements of you know your asking to your your meeting requirements for lot coverage by doing this so we just wanted to see some even if you just file that at the register of your deeds but show it conveying to tyler well we can file an 81x plan that shows it as all one plan this doesn't require yep planning board approval because we're not creating any new lines or ways it's just uh shows those two lots as combined that's 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 right. Right. Yeah, what we're trying to do. I mm -hmm. think that's yeah. 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 We just yeah. want to make sure that yeah, yeah, no, it is one, one lot as yeah. opposed to two lots under one ownership. The, and correct. the note isn't that clear. Okay. So it's clear that Tyler is obtaining ownership of parcel A. Which is, okay. in, but 
but it's not necessarily absolutely clear that it's all now one lot. Understood. So I think either adjusting this or filing the, the um, other plan is would would do. Yeah, I mean, Tyler set the close on it. So I think I think that this can serve so a purpose I, for yeah. conveying the, making it a parcel. Yes. And then in order for us to wrap up the site plan, we need you to fill out that form. I mean, the other option is we could add the note tomorrow and bring it back for signature by the end. But like I said, we it's close on Monday. It's close on Monday on it. So he needs to record this. Yeah. At, so, yeah, at yeah. the time of. Well, like I said, yeah. I'm fine with it the way it is. Yeah. Okay. For the purposes of it becoming parcel A mm -hmm. in tireless ownership. Yeah. But like I say, for us to sign off on the site plan review, we need you to show that document that makes parcel A become part of 156 Rhode yes. Island Road that then guarantees that his lot coverages are accurate based on what you're showing on the plan. And you, you meet all those requirements to sure. not have to go through the big box sure. things. Yes. Okay. So that said, are we okay with voting on this plan yes. as it drafted to form parcel A? And mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Everybody good with that? Any comments from the planning board? Uh, this is a question. Do you have, um, have a right on AR should talk about um, trees, buffers, and anything like that for traffic studies? Not on AR. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Uh, so, I and mean, basically, we're endorsing this plan as an AR. So, yeah. make a motion to endorse the approval of. A plan approval not required plan for 154 Rhode Island Road. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Are you good there to file out of the registry deeds? Next item on the agenda site plan review. I'm going to get back to wherever my agenda was for 156 Rhode Island Road. So, you got us some plans today in the yeah, email. Very, very late in the day, yeah. Uh, I didn't have a chance to review them. I talked to Mark about them earlier today. Um, I guess we had some concerns. We talked about some changes. Um, it, and again, I'm, the, the plan I have is It says 726 on it, yeah. but it still shows a 60-foot opening. We talked about going down to 45. Well, uh, okay, so just basically I talked to Mark at 615 tonight, and that was the first I heard about the reduction in the size of the opening. And uh, in our discussion today, he said that, that the plan board during the last meeting had a discussion and said they would like to go down to 45. But I, I pointed Mark to the fact that the zoning bylaw says if you have one opening, it can be 54 feet wide. So we'd like to make it 54 feet wide and, and make that change, go from 60 to 54. Do you agree with that? It yeah, is correct. We did discuss the, and read through the section, which is 6.5. I'm fine with that. I mean, it, yeah. Yeah. As long as we're not doing something that's outlandish no it's you know it's, yeah. you have a unique circumstance and if certainly within the bylaws we don't have a problem with that we're not trying to make it any harder on tyler to do business there we understand with the big trucks if it fits the project better i, I talked to you bob but we just yeah. wanted to hang our hat on something that worked and sure. Sure. had some legal basis to it yeah yes. i think the the original reason why it was 30 feet is because um there were multiple entrances in the past, in the previous versions, and those would have had to have been 30 feet. But now that he only has a single entrance and it's a commercial slash industrial project, it's allowed to be 54 feet. So I missed that. So. That's fine. Uh, you and I have talked also about some some berms and other things. Mark, do you? Um. Yeah. Well, we did. Um, Apparently, um, along Crooked Lane, there was a discussion about a berm along 
So, so we, we, we addressed that a little bit. We added a one foot tall berm. We didn't go quite the, the three feet that was discussed. But there's a one foot berm and the plant things we're proposing um, can grow between five and 10 feet tall. So that we figured that that would be a, a sufficient buffer on the roadway to the project. Okay. Was there anything else that we talked about that you felt was or wasn't addressed from our, I don't remember well, all from our phone call. Again, yeah, um, I only, these only showed up today, so I haven't had the chance to go through them, but um, I don't know if there's anything else you can Mr. Chairman, if I, 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 what I did was I just prepared a brief uh, letter of the, of the change, or a brief summary of the, of the changes, which go is right very through. simple, and I'll, I'll just go right through so uh, one of the comments last time we didn't show the um, industrial wastewater holding tanks on the property so we've now shown two tight tanks um they're just um in well that's uh not what i want um they're basically we added them to the to the low to the area here and to the area right there so so those are now shown uh the the, the one you uh, requested uh, mr chairman that the, the existing building be labeled as accessory building so we labeled that as accessory building um we performed a sweat path analysis of the entrance to aid in your um review of that so there was we showed both entry and exit in and out of that in uh, both directions in both directions yep um we had a discussion with Michael Luda of Taunton Water Department about the availability and the process for obtaining water. Um, he said he was going to get me a letter. I did not receive it yet about that, that it, yes, it is available and that um, the, the process for uh, applying for it. But he said there should be no problem obtaining water from the city of Taunton. Um, there was some request for changing the um, some of the plant species there's uh, trees shown at several locations on the site and we had originally proposed uh Zelko, Japanese Zelkova. uh we switched those to be a native um uh, the, uh, uh red maple is what we, we switched to so those will provide a large canopy uh shade tree a uh, very common shade native shade tree i guess um we changed some of the um, species of the, the plantings out front here. And we kept those as, as kind of a low, our intention is to keep it as a decorative uh, flowering evergreen uh, shrubbery. Not obstructive, correct. Yeah, that, that won't obstruct that corner. Because it, you know, it does give good sight distances now across that from in both directions, coming up off Rhode Island Road and uh, Crooked Lane, so we didn't want any, any elevated vegetation would be in the driver's, uh, driver's view path. Um, the, the lighting on the overall site we made a lot less intense. I'm kind of learning how to do lighting design and I made it a little too crazy at the beginning but we reduced that down and now it's uh, it's it's much better. There's all low, low intensity light across the site. And the zero spillover onto the um, onto the abutting properties. Full roadway. Uh, you requested um, so based on some about our compacts that, that excuse me about our comments that we do a traffic impact assessment so we hired a consultant and he was able to, to squish that in and get it done and we submitted that the findings of that um, assessment is basically uh no impact or no measurable impact on the adjacent roadways or uh, intersections from our proposed uh, project um, we added two additional dumpster locations in the area there and there. So uh, there was two shown before. We just added two additional dumpster locations. We put those in areas that would hopefully be easy to pick for the um, for the trucks. Are those on pads? Those are pads. Yep. So those are going to be uh, concrete pads with, with uh, fenced in with dumpsters on top. And then um, just just in case in the future, I'm not sure, but Tyler might have some. Uh, AC uh, in his particular unit, so we did add two condensers on the northerly side of the building. I think that was all the changes we made. 
And then we did respond, we submitted a response letter to, to Mark's comments, which he gave us at the last, at the last meeting, which um, most of those things were, were addressed. Yeah. And we didn't address all his comments. We, we didn't go quite as high on the burn, and we didn't change really too much of the vegetation at the intersection of Rhode Island Road and Crooked Lane. But short of that, um, I believe we would okay. respond to all of Do any, any board members have any comments for Michelle? This has come a long way, mm -hmm. and I think you guys have gone above and beyond closing off the egress to Crooked Lane, adding, well, adding to your lot size to reduce a lot coverage. I'm happy with this. Yeah, I think you did a great job in listening to what the abutters were saying and implementing it. with it. Um, Sorry. That said, um, because the plans came in so late, we'd just like to take the next two weeks to just check everything. But I think w with what you've gone over just now, I think that satisfies everything. Uh, I guess my intent would be title closes on that parcel A, and at the next meeting, can you come back with that form to show that those his lot, 156, and the parcel A have been merged? Yep. So that at that point, if everything's been satisfied with when we review the plans thoroughly, that we can close this out? The change in the driveway too, though, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll reduce the driver to 54 feet. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. I feel like even the 60 is okay with the yeah. other cars. Yeah, if 54 is in the bylaw, I think yeah, that okay. we can stick with something that's, mm. you know, within Yeah, I, I think 30 feet would not have worked, but I believe 54 will work. Yeah. yeah. Because they really are allowed to have that yep. other entrance. So do you think you'll be ready for August 10th? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll get these in very quickly. Yes. Yeah. Super. Get them in by the Wednesday? Yes. Not yes. Thursday? Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, so I'm going to make a motion to continue the site plan review for 156 uh, Rhode Island Road until August 10th at 7 p.m. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you very much. agenda is to discuss the open space uh, bylaw that uh, Mark's been working on. Did, did you grab copies of that? I did not. No. Okay, that's fine. I think uh, at this point I'd like to minimize discussion on that tonight because Mark, there was everybody in the board included in that? Yes. Okay, so you guys all saw Mark circulated the latest draft. I'm going to let him talk to the changes he made, but it went out most importantly to Board of Health and Conservation Commission. He and I will work towards setting up on their agendas to go and kind of do a presentation to make sure that they're satisfied if they do have, we, we really want to force out any comments from them so it's not like last time on town meeting floor and they sort of gave us the idea of support then they walked that back. We don't want to waste our time so we're just really going to push to try and get that vetted through those boards. Um, Mark, I'll let you go through the changes you made. I know some were Michelle's and then most were CONCOM. So Board of Health. Board of Health, yeah. So, so um, one of the changes um, that uh, conservation had, actually they had two changes. One is they were concerned about <clears throat> multiple small par parcels having to be accepted by the town or some conservation group and not really um, having the desire to do that. So we put in a 20 acre minimum 
for um, so that at least there'll be a 10 acre parcel which is fairly substantial of open space the only exception to that would be is if the open space that's being proposed abuts an existing parcel of open space and can be combined in that entity uh, desires to acquire that extra open space so if conservation already owns a, a, a parcel of open space someone has 10 acres and would like to add the five acres of their open space and do a five acre development and if conservation is willing to accept that extra five acres they could do it on a 10 acre parcel instead of having to have 20 acres uh, so that addresses one of the two conservation commission uh, issues the second issue that conservation had had to do with restricting the uh, open space land under article 97 so um, I inserted some language um, for that um, so that it's quite clear the open space land can't be um, reused in a other manner without legislative approval um, that's what article 97 does it means it has to go back to the Massachusetts legislature to be removed um, the changes, the concerns that we heard from uh, the Board of Health was that if you have smaller lots and you locate both a well and a septic system on a smaller lot, if you're not super careful about where those are located, even if we required during the approval process to have general locations for well and septic, if they get shifted and moved, they could impact the development of the budding parcels which if one developer is building out the whole thing he's going to be super careful not to do that because he's going to want to sell every house but if someone builds a road and sells off the lots that could be a problem if, the, if they're developed individually by different homeowners and the wells weren't already drilled and the wells weren't already drilled the septics weren't already installed so um so in order to address that we required one of uh, two things either water is a public water supply whether it's provided by our, by taunton which provides a lot of public water in town or a public water system which is basically a privately run public water supply um, or so either water is supplied and then you can have private septics on each lot or you do a common septic system or a um or a sewer treatment plant and then you can have individual bells on each lot so um the areas of these common septic or um uh, private water company locations would be excluded from the uh, calculations uh for the open space um so though that should address that that concern about um having you know uh, wells and septic in too close proximity to each other and so those are those are the primary changes from or basically all the changes from from what we've discussed in the past okay so I didn't want to delve too, too far into that tonight because we're still going to wait for comments from those other boards. Hopefully get some feedback that's positive or they accept the changes. And then we could discuss it at, at that point just to make sure everybody's satisfied. So is everybody good with that approach for now? Sure. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to move on then on the agenda. And I guess Kathy and Mark, as we get feedback from or mark when mm -hmm. you know i'll be a conservation yes <laughs> uh but when we go to meet with those folks mm -hmm. and then we get some feedback we'll throw it back on the agenda to at least have a discussion back here yep so keep that on the radar uh discussion regarding the sign bylaw and commercial zoning districts has anybody put any work into that or should that be something that we um i think the sign bylaw we only um, carried it over because Cheryl wasn't here and she had spent a great deal of time on it and we don't want to vote without hearing from her well i think i had made some changes to the wording and i sent it to you i didn't know if you had had a chance to review it what you thought yeah i, it I thought it was fine oh, okay yeah. um and so did everybody see it i guess is the i think i overlooked it if it came to me 
Okay. Or if it's been a while and I just, okay, so I could look back. Two or three weeks. Okay. So recirculate that? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And then put that on the agenda for the next meeting for the sign by law, Kathy. Uh, next item is discussion regarding subdivision waivers. So, I, um, I think uh, we had talked maybe about trying to write a um, tier. Yeah, like a, a, some towns have, they call it a family compound or some other types of uh, state lot um, where they, they specify the road design for like a three, up to three lots or up to four lots. They'll have a, just a small number of lots and they'll have a specific road design and standard that they want to see so that all of these private roads can all fall within something. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, lantern lighting, but instead of at the end of each driveway, it's a more traditional street light type lanterns. Whether, um, you know, so that it's, they'll always be on as opposed to homeowners shutting them off and stuff. Whether you want to have sidewalks on these things or not, it'll be decided ahead of time. So that a builder, developer, homeowner will, will kind of know what that standard is going into the process as opposed to asking a bunch of waivers and sometimes you get some, sometimes you don't. Um, so again, that would um, so do we have like a, a template that we can well, yeah I mean there's, of, there's, yeah there's a whole variety of, of bylaws that we can do um, but it's it's pretty much um, most of the time we can do it through subdivision rules unless you want to get into changing um, lot lot sizes frontages that kind of thing because some some towns will do it and they'll put it in the zoning and some towns will make it, like you said, a tier within the subdivision rules and regs. I think that so, it would make sense to do it within our subdivision rules and regs because mm -hmm. that's when we're going to be looking at it and implementing for those mm -hmm. types of waivers. I guess to, to really effectively do this, I think that if you could find uh, three templates mm -hmm. of different tiered, uh, I, you know, I guess I look at large commercial or industrial development as being well, everything's required yeah. very very few where you'd have to mm -hmm. you could just not allow you know nothing would be allowed to be waived in that type of and, and, and again I'm not giving a good example of not not everything would be waived or nothing would be waived mm -hmm. as much as the requirements for 25 foot streetlight poles right. would be mm -hmm. a standard that's not going to get waived that's a requirement uh, almost like there's major things that in that type of, of situation wouldn't be waived and then you almost have like a minor set you know two differentiations between things mm -hmm. well i think we, we we're looking at probably three tiers which would be maybe a road to be accepted by the town and two different scenarios for that road to be accepted by the town would be a cul-de-sac or a through street you know if somebody had had the ability to make a road connect to another road you may want different standards or you know sidewalks or something because it's going to be a walking road to go between but with those those roads would have a standard then these homeowner association three lot subdivisions that we see would have different minimum requirements meanwhile the big industrial commercial would have so, different requirements so, so this is what i would suggest is that our subdivision rules and regs are i don't know if there's a date on this copy i have here but they're rather old <laughs> they're, they're rather old and i don't believe they've been updated for many years so this could be a project, let's get through um, what's required for, if we're gonna submit articles for town meeting. So um, I don't believe the selectmen on Monday, they're gonna set dates. 
so we may have to um, but I think this would be a good project to go through late uh, fall winter yeah the, the, that, but yeah and, 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 and it's more than just updated. setting some tiers I think there's some procedural um, things there's some other items in this um, that we ought to look at as well so um, but we could in in looking at that um, you know set some of those standards for you know the minus streets is a lot of them they call them minus streets major streets and then a lot of towns will have um like uh, a commercial subdivision requirements because large you know just like at the industrial park different animals. you have different animals. you have trucks coming and going all day long um you know they sometimes should, in the night right yeah. and they should be regular street lights there should be a sidewalk the neat road needs to be wider even even like a major um, roadway for a big subdivision that roadway still doesn't need to be of the same standard as like an industrial park road correct the paving standard could be even different so, so is this like have like a subset of i guess mm -hmm. allowances that you wouldn't need as many waivers for like 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 what we're doing right. like we've got 14 waivers right is this to like say well these ones are given is that the idea of it yeah and then you also not get waivers they're just they're they're follow these rules and regs yeah. and your you, these lower standards yeah and you get some more consistency in in the design of what you're thinking i mean there every piece of land is different so there may be some unique characteristics of the land or the features the slopes ledge whatever where you may have to grant some waivers for right, to, correct. um but for the most part you know um, i agree so at some point we need to put on the agenda to mm -hmm. update the rules and regs and that'll be that that will encompass the waivers right. process uh but i just want everybody to be cautious that i, I still think we need to put some requirements in that we may need to waive mm -hmm. and it, 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 from a leverage standpoint right you know right. You, you you may want to again you get a development you don't like and yeah i know what you mean so if you if we you still if we make the waivers for this one they're just going to give waivers they're going to ask for waivers for other things so is that what you mean for the leverage kind of idea but well, you still make them strong, strong, right? Right. So that you know, if if the situation arises, they have to show to you that there's a they they need to um, there's a reason why they should be asking for a waiver. So right. you know, but you decide on what you want to see, what you want to see for these minor roads, you know, these these three or four lot subdivision. What is that design you want to see? Okay, we have two sets of minutes in our packet. Uh, I saw them somewhere. Shuffled the file so many times now. I would move to approve the minutes of July 13th. Second. As drafted, no changes. As drafted, no changes. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the July 13th minutes. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, actually, me, Jack, and Nora. Yeah, we were there. That was our last meeting. Right. Yeah, we had a yep. uh, And then we also have uh, minutes for May 11th. Did you get a chance to review those, Nora? I did. I would move that we approve the minutes of May 11th as written, no changes. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Both the minutes for July 13th and May 11th have been approved. Uh, any correspondence, Mark? Uh, no. And I do have a question. Go ahead, just, Michelle. Um, just to you know, clear up any sort of like public perception i'm curious to know what have you seen as far as any sort of um news or potential plans for the hospital site um i haven't seen anything yet so they haven't given well, i have not received any, any plans we had a conversation with them march or april um 
about them possibly putting together an alternative based on what um, might be allowed under the various overlays and the base zone and trying to pick what might be economically viable to do um, if they can, you know, find, um, you know, t whether it's tenants or developers or, you know. And so what, what direction were they leaning? Um, toward what would be considered more of a mixed use project with some housing, some commercial, some office. But um, again, it was just a very preliminary discussion. So there's been no plans or anything. Have they uh, given any update on their appeal? I have not talked to them about that. I have no okay. idea. That's why I'd like to spell it. Mr. Chair, I just have, I have one comment. And this is, don't anybody take this personally. Do we have a cutoff on all these changes that are being made to something that's on the agenda to be in? Seems like we're getting them later and later and closer to the meeting, but I don't have a time that I feel I think every sufficient two, to review them. Kathy, correct me if I'm wrong, like every two years we make an official vote to say 10 days, yes, and then it slowly trickles to like, <laughs> they push it and they push it and they push it. So. Well, well, then they have to go to the next meeting, in my opinion. I'm uh, just not going to vote on it. Isn't this, like, Sikorsky, this is going on for, what, a year? I'm not it's sure what Yeah, but I'm more concerned, Jack, about we get stuff from them today, the day of the meeting, or the day before the meeting. And we're not able to really dig into it, but they are yeah. allowed, They have been allowed to send it because it's on the agenda right, for that week's meeting. That, yeah, now, doesn't ConCom Com actually take a vote on whether they want to look at plans if they've been submitted the same day? I don't know if that's something, if plan board implements, maybe they'll be a little bit more hesitant to delay. Right. I just don't understand why we can't establish a deadline Kathy. and make them stick to the deadline. Yeah. Because so what oh, hang, on, hang on. We're going to let Kathy go. I asked her a question about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> so what your deadline is, is for a submittal for an agenda item. So if they're submitting something for the agenda, that is a 10-day deadline. You don't have one for something that's just been continued. It's really you're at your discretion if you want to accept, accept it or not, or if you want to set a, you know, a, a timeline of two days or three days or so not I think at all. For us to take official action, we need to put that on Thank the you. agenda to do that. But I'm happy to say that on our next meeting, if you guys wanted to discuss and vote on Tuesday at the close of business, if we don't have it by Tuesday at the close of business to physically be in the packet or whenever. I, I, I'm not saying that's the time. No, I understand. Yeah, for, I would like to be put discussion. on the agenda. Yeah. Yes. So, right, Kathy, if you could put that on the agenda for our next meeting to discuss, uh, what are we going to call that? Deadline. Deadlines for, for deadlines for submittals. Yeah, for additional submittals. Hey, it's not fair to Kathy. It's not fair to us. It's not fair right. to anyone. I mean, we had we had three sets of. But they all did it today. Yeah. Yeah. Today, that's right. So, I mean, in all fairness, you know, you had some. Uh, productive discussions, but you did not take a vote on the what was submitted for today. Now, sometimes it might be just some minor changes, and it may be perfectly fine. So I just want you to think about how no, I flexible I that sort of, how I flexible think we can be or not flexible, right. but with a deadline. Yes. And I think it's one thing when we were COVID online, and, and we were getting them emailed, and everything was on. You know the computer anyways but now we're they're printing out things and having to bring them to the meeting it does make it a lot more yes, difficult it's a lot of work to do this yeah. um could, could we also um bring the planning board goals back i know i thought we were going to do that once a month yeah i thought we, we were i, I think we talked about over. bringing them on this week so they got overlooked so mm -hmm. but i would ask they not be at the next meeting because i don't know if i'm going to be here or if i'm physically if mentally I will be there. <laughs> I'm having major back surgery next Friday. So okay. could I ask that and everybody agree that we do that for the first meeting in September because I was by the office and talked to Kathy that if we don't have a lot going on we may forego our second meeting in August if that's the case. 
Mm-hmm. So it's just the only time of the year that we do that mm-hmm. because typically it's a slow before fall stuff happens again. Yep. So I that's don't want to keep kicking the can down the road, but no, that's first, fine. first in September, if that's you're okay fine. with that. So I make an announcement that our next meeting is August 10th, 2023, here at the Lake Hill Police Station. Um, there is no other business that comes before the board tonight. So I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Second. Have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned.